This is Mitch Goldblatt. I'm about to call the regular meeting of the Orange Recycling Committee to order. It is July 15th, and we are about 10 minutes after 7. Uh, call the meeting to order. And with us tonight, members of the committee are uh, Eileen and Mark Moyer, Chris Prokop, Karen Del Justina, and Wendy Novick. So um, with that, uh, I'm going to ask if there's any public input. I do not see anyone online tonight from the public. We are broadcasting this um, on OGAP. We're also broadcasting it on Zoom. Uh, the agenda was sent out with the Zoom link to those who have expressed interest. And of course, it's available anyone calling town hall. So um, with that, then we will move on to the um, consideration of the minutes from our last meeting, which was June 17th. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? No. 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 Okay. Is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? I'll make, I'll make a, motion. a motion. Motion by Chris. Is there a second? Second. Second, Wendy. Um, okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Mark, great job as always. Thank you very much for the minutes. No we appreciate problem. that. Okay, next up, I'll turn to Mark again though for our treasurer's report. Uh, no changes since last month. Our budget uh, balance is still $1,392.48. Uh, we have been approved for the, you know, the new fiscal year, $1,700, which hopefully will be credited by the next month meeting. Okay. Um, if there's no qu any questions for Mark on the treasurer's report. Nope. Okay. I've also the next thing on the agenda is the uh, recycling rates, which I have sent out to each of you, and you can see we had a robust June. Yep. Um, Eighty-six point one three tons of mm. material was recycled, either by curbside or by those bringing the cans, bottles, paper to the transfer station. That represents a 12.3% increase over last June, uh, which was encouraging since May we were down, May to May, and then uh, June we're up. Uh, the last four months, uh, March through June, we've been pretty consistent in around the 80 ton per month uh, number. So certainly hoping that increases, but to thank those out there who are doing their part and recycling. Oh. Any questions, comments about that? No. Okay. No. All right. Uh, next up, uh, I put a little uh, kudos to uh, Chris Prokop uh, for his bird dogging uh, for that shed at the transfer station. Uh, right <laughs> after our last, right after our last meeting, I think it was that uh, two or three days later. Um, I got a call from uh, Matt Hyatt, the uh, store manager at the Home Depot, saying, are you ready? <laughs> and I said, we've been ready. <laughs> I said, actually, it was a Saturday morning. And I said, well, when are we going to get that shed? And he says, I got my guy taking it over now. <laughs> and I had just come back from the transfer station. I jumped in the car, turned around and got stuck behind a forklift, making its way from from uh, Home Depot to the transfer station. <laughs> not, a very, not a very long ride, but certainly a very slow ride. Um, yeah. And then um, uh, they got it off the forklift and set it up, a little help uh, from uh, Jerry at the transfer station and myself and, and the fellow from Home Depot. The four of us kind of positioned it into place and we got the uh, rack and pack out of storage, which means it was just on the side. And we got the bags out of storage, which was in the uh, information booth there at the transfer station. And we were back in business. And by 4.30 in the afternoon, that was already filled. Uh -huh. um, yes. Uh, it's been filled a number. Of, I've been told, and I've seen, but I've been told it has been filled a number of times since um, by people who have uh, really been excited about being able to uh, recycle the bags and wrap. Some have been collecting for a long time. Others have just gotten back into it saying, hey, it's great. It's back. Um, and also the most important thing it does for us is, is tell people there's another place outside of the blue bin and outside of that 
big uh, dumpster at the transfer station for the uh, uh, for your plastic bags, your wraps. When I say wraps, for those that are listening, that means the things that wrap up your paper towels, your your water bottles, uh, the toilet tissue, and mm. quite frankly, um, we just got a, a large purchase in the house, and uh, it was shrink wrapped beyond belief. <laughs> All that shrink wrap is going into the is going this weekend to the transfer station into that uh, rack and pack because that too is uh, is recyclable if it is segregated as we've been doing. So bubble wrap too. Excuse me. Bubble wrap also. Bubble wrap too. Yes, yes. All kind, all kinds of you know soft, uh, pliable um, plastic, and especially since at least temporarily up until just recently the uh, tax on bags was lifted and people have been using a uh, plethora of uh, plastic bags during COVID. Uh, so people have, have collected quite a few that can be uh, recycled as well. So I wanna thank everybody for their participation. I wanna thank Chris Prokop for not letting go of this one. Uh, <laughs> now, the Home Depot, yeah, congratulations, Chris. Yeah. Uh, my and the Home Depot, Matt, at the Home Depot has still pledged to us that this is only a temporary shelter. They are still looking to get us the permanent shelter that was the original plan. Mm. Uh, we're just happy to have this up and hopefully um, as things calm down a little bit and he's able to get things through his corporate, um, we'll get a more uh, permanent structure there that uh, uh, will last a long time. Any other comments, questions? Thanks for the thumbs up, Karen. <laughs> uh, no, Mark, I just wanted to say, uh, yes, great job, Chris, keeping uh, on top of this. And the two weeks that I've gone in a row to bring paper uh, plastic bags, it's been very neat. The shed is up and running and um, it, it looks great. Back to normal. Yeah, thank you. I would say for a temporary shed, I'm, I'm quite impressed and I, I do appreciate Matt and Home Depot Orange. I, I was staying on them because we were feeling the pressure from the town, you know, our, our neighbors and residents to uh, have something, especially as the plastic bags resurface. So uh, I'm just glad we, we finally were able to get it there. Mitch and I really tag teamed ultimately <laughs> on this one. So uh, that was good teamwork and uh, yeah, glad, glad Home Depot was right there to, to deliver for us. Thanks again. Sure. Okay, next next up on the agenda is to discuss the textile recycling at the transfer station. Um, for those of you that are able to see um, <clears throat> and maybe not hear so much because there was some glitches, the uh, the board of selectmen meeting, um, our efforts were once again tabled. Um, our efforts to replace uh, the Goodwill trailer with the uh, simple recycling trailer. I'll give you the Reader's Digest version of a long discussion and ask for any comments or questions that you may have. You know, basically to recap, especially for those that are listening in uh, OGAT land, um, simple recycling are the uh, uh, purveyors of the pink bag program, which has been suspended or canceled in orange but they have proposed to replace the Goodwill trailer at the transfer station and pay the town of Orange $60 per ton of uh, all textiles and home goods that they do uh, receive there. Um, so back at the June meeting of the Board of Selectmen, there was some discussion about it. There were a lot of questions that came up and the item was tabled. I went back to Sonny Wilkins, who's the Vice President of Business Development. Um, with a number of questions, about a dozen questions from the Board of Selectmen and from other comments that came out based on that um, from Selectmen separately. Uh, he answered every single one. <clears throat> um, you know, I felt very adequately and what was necessary went back to the table in the July meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, Sonny Wilkins was going to attend that meeting via Zoom, but as those of you may have seen, the meeting was held in person uh, so therefore, he was on my speakerphone and able to answer additional questions that, that uh, arose from the meeting. Um, there was some misconception that the town should have been getting $60 a ton all along. It was only the $20 a ton when we had the pink bag. Program. The $60 is based on having everything at the transfer station. Um, 
There were some concerns about Goodwill. I pointed out that Goodwill had not picked up um, since the COVID crisis began up until this past weekend before the, before the Board of Selectmen meeting. Uh, the uh, container remained locked. After the, after the meeting, it had been revealed as the first Selectmen looked into that situation that it was, um, uh, Goodwill was not called to pick up and the trailer was not full. The trailer was actually empty. The trailer is now back open. And for those that do want to uh, participate um, with the textiles, home goods and everything else they give to Goodwill, that trailer is back open for, for business uh, at the transfer station. But um, you went through a number of questions, some misconceptions, uh, some concerns. The biggest concern I feel from my fellow board members um, right now is that there's a there's a uh, a feeling that we don't want to pull off uh, pull away from goodwill, which has been a taxpayer in town for some time. Um, and there's also some trepidation about entering into a three year contract uh, with with simple recycling. Interesting enough. Uh, there's another town in Connecticut that Simple Recycling is working with their transfer station at, which is in Stonington. <clears throat> and I reached out to the public works director at Stonington, who was very helpful. Um, I told him a lot about our plastic bag recycling, and he told me a lot about his mattress recycling, so we exchanged <laughs> notes. Um, but, the, but the bottom line is that they've been working with Simple Recycling at their transfer station for a short period of time, uh, where they have the smaller boxes uh, for Goodwill, not a big uh, trailer like we have in the um, at the town transfer station, the smaller ones you'd see in a parking lot. Um, Goodwill has just announced to them and all the towns in that area that they would be removing those boxes. Um, I've not been able to confirm yet whether our transfer station trailer is also going to be removed. The reason I ask that is because they reached out to the transfer stations and other places in the that area, which is run by the same Goodwill department. Goodwill of I think it's I think it's called something like uh, uh, Goodwill of Eastern New England and uh, Rhode Island or Eastern Connecticut, Rhode Island, something like that. It's the same auspices that is saying saying to them they're pulling away all their their trailers, but their their drop off boxes. So we'll see. The wild card that entered into the discussion, hang on, Eileen, the wild card entered into the discussion the other day with the Board of Selectmen was the fact that the first Selectman's office was notified by a, an entity called Bay State Textiles that they would like to collect at our transfer station, and they would offer us $100 a ton uh, for the, um, what they would take. They operate with a number in a number of communities in, in the state, and they also were offering to put drop boxes, the smaller containers, at each of our schools. Um, so that all sounded very interesting and caught us caught I think everyone except the first selectman who just received that information that 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 day uh, by surprise and kind of you know altered the discussion to not just well we're we willing to make a make a change from goodwill, but maybe not. But if we are going to make a change from Goodwill, are we getting the best proposal from Simple Recycling or is there a better proposal out there? Um, so after the meeting, I um, spoke uh, on the phone with the first selectman and said, uh, because this got tabled and it got tabled to the August meeting, which I'll discuss about in, in a second. Um, and so it's tabled for a second time. And I discussed with the first selectman the idea of, well, now that we have kind of two proposals, three potential, maybe there's more out there. Um, but um, we would um, go out with a, a bid, so to speak, proposal. So I floated that out to you guys, and some of you got back to me with some very good comments. Um, I sent that off yesterday to Town Hall asking for their comments. And if there were no comments, to please forward this off to at least the following Goodwill, Simple Recycling, and Bay State Textiles, or others. Um, I got comments back so far, it's only been a day, um, from the Public Works Director, Bob Britton, who uh, 
decide, well, he, he suggested that we change the word bid to just proposal because we're really not asking for a bid. We're asking for their proposal, which I thought was fine. And he also added a question um, to the 22 questions we already had or 23 questions we already had of um, what happens to materials that they won't accept. Uh, will they discard them at the transfer station? Will they discard them separately? You know, which is fine. So I got back to Bob and said, I have no problem with his suggestions and um, asked whether he or someone else would be sending out the proposal, propo our, our, our um, questions as a proposal. Uh, he has not uh, responded to that request yet. I just want to, I just hope that whether it comes out from his office, the first selectman's office, the finance office or wherever that it does go out because I would hate to see us, you know, um, table this again or turn it down because we didn't have sufficient information. And I think, you know, the questions there, most of you looked at them, I think, I think would be sufficient enough for us to make us being the board of selectmen to make a decision. Eileen, you had a question. I was wondering about the goodwill taking away the bins at those other transfer stations. Is it due exclusively to COVID or was there some other reason that was happening before COVID started maybe? It, their, their correspondence to Stonington, I have a copy of that email. It kind of um, indicated due to current circumstances. So I don't know if that, I don't know if it was specifically COVID, but the the bottom line was it was going to be a permanent uh, removal. It wasn't just we can't do it now. If things calm down, we'll come back. It was basically a business decision that was determined to no longer collect. They would obviously still collect things at all their stores, um, but they were not going to collect them ancillary Um uh, at transfer stations. Once again, um, I spoke to Sylvie. She had not in the public works department. She had not been aware of any correspondence to our community as of yet. And I haven't had a chance to reach out yet to um, Goodwill to see if that is going to affect us or not. Obviously, if they pull out voluntarily, <laughs> um, that does leave a gap. And we certainly want to put something else up there. If they don't uh, remove the trailer voluntarily. The question is whether we will, you know, have them stay as they have for many, many years, or whether we will look for the alternative whereby we would be able to accept, uh, from what I can gather, uh, more varied materials, worn out. I've said this before many times, ripped, <laughs> ripped, stained, um, broken uh, materials that they still have a market for that Goodwill may not. And also, pay the town at a time when the rates of everything else keep going up on us. It'd be nice to have something to help us offset that. So um, I did mention August 12th, there will be the next meeting of the board of selectmen. Coincidentally, August 12th is planned for a special town meeting to discuss a road abandonment over by uh, Smith farm road, um, a portion of a road to allow for a multi-housing development to go in. It does require, it doesn't require, it doesn't require, there's a, there's a request for a piece of the road that's never been developed to be abandoned. That requires town meeting um, discussion and vote. So the first selectman has determined that with social distancing and masks, that we will open up a High Plains Community Center for an in-person meeting on August 12th uh, for that town meeting, which will be coupled with the Board of Selectmen meeting when this item will be back on the agenda. So if anyone from the committee or anyone from the town who's watching is interested in weighing in some input, however they feel on this issue, it will be before the Board of Selectmen and there'll be an opportunity to um, speak in person. Obviously, if people don't feel comfortable or can't make the meeting in person, please by all means, either send me or better yet, the entire Board of Selectmen uh, an email uh, with your thoughts uh, on this issue. So I know that sounded long-winded, but it was a long discussion. I see Karen's hand. I think Chris's hand was up first. Oh, Chris, I think, Chris, was your hand up first? Karen's deferring to you, to the gentleman from Avon Drive. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thanks, Karen. I guess I'll jump on it. Mitch, can you just clarify the base state? Uh, I, I'm, was, I may have missed something in regards to how do they compare to Simple Recycle and Goodwill and what they would accept and what they would not? Are they more in line with the Simple Recycle that will accept more than what Goodwill you know, traditionally accepts? Well, Chris, I don't know. What was passed out at the meeting that night was a verbal $100 a, um, a ton to the town and some information that came directly from their website. Um, it indicated, um, as best as I can describe it, I probably should have shown pictures and has show and tell here, um, kind of like a, a bookmobile, bloodmobile type of uh, trailer that was on wheels that they would uh, accept things at the transfer station. It looked uh, probably half the size of the uh, current Goodwill trailer, hmm. but they also, like I say, offered more than what Simple Recycling put out there and also um, mentioned that they would be willing to put the drop boxes, the kind you see all over places, um, yeah. at our schools okay. as well for additional pickup. Yeah. Uh, now that that creates its own set of questions whether the town thinks that's a good idea whether uh the board of education thinks that's a good idea um i mean i personally think it's a great idea if we can do it if if we if we go that route um but once again chris i don't know specifically what they will accept what they won't accept which is another reason why i'm you know asking the the selectman first selectman to send out that proposal because the questions I ask in the proposal will answer those. So we can put apples to apples, or as Eileen Moyer has said, junk to junk. <laughs> to, uh, to determine, to de no, seriously, you know, you ask them, that's a very good question. I don't know. Uh, they say they've got, um, uh, once again, I haven't had a chance to look into this and anybody else has, Feel, feel free to call. I can give, send you the towns. I think you sent, I sent you the website um, information with this meeting materials that you can look at. There's a number of towns in Connecticut they, they work with. I don't know if they are asking for an exclusive contract like Simple. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, they're, if they will take, um, you know, materials that, once again, that Simple will take or they'll take things that Goodwill will take. Or remember, the, the title... Their name is is Bay State Textiles, so I'm not sure what else they will accept. But mm -hmm. that's why that's why I think it's important for me as a selectman and hopefully the other five members of the board of selectmen to get that information so that August 12th we can make an informed decision as to whether we make a change or not. And if we do make a change, we make the right change. So um, and and give everybody an opportunity to put it all on paper. Uh, once again, Karen, go ahead, and then Eileen. So the goodwill bin there at the transfer station is huge, and um, it takes up a lot of real estate. And I think I was following you, your explanation that for months and months and months, it, it's actually been empty because it was locked. Is that true? Well, I was told, and I had presumed also, but I was told that it was filled and they closed it off during the beginning of the pandemic sometime in mid-March. Mm -hmm. Because Goodwill, like a lot of other companies, had closed, at yeah. least temporarily. Okay. So that was my understanding. My understanding also from talking to people at the transfer station uh, was that since we've entered phase two, um, when a lot of things opened back up and I started asking questions such as, what's going on with Goodwill? Well, they haven't picked up. Well, they haven't picked up. Well, they haven't picked up. As we repeatedly heard that. My assumption was based on what I was told and what I also assumed was that the bin was filled. That's why it was shut down and they had still not picked up. What the first selectman was able to glean was that the bin was empty and they just hadn't been called. Um, so okay. that has now been resolved. So the bin is, well, was empty the other day. It's now, it's now I'm sure uh, being, being filled up. Um, and is, is open again for residents to use. So people should know that anyway, whether we make a change or not, you know, people right. who want to know that. So, so my question is, um, like part two to my question is, does Goodwill have a contract just that's exclusive? Do they have a contract? 
And my understanding, and that's a good question, Karen, which also was raised by another member of the board of selectmen. My understanding is that Google has no real contract with the town. They just, and I'm going to say probably a minimum of 15, 20, 20 years that okay. been, or been like it has been up at the transfer station. Um, you know, I imagine Google could pull that, pull that out at any time. I imagine the town could say, you're not taking care of it. We want you to pull it out. Uh, there was a time, and this goes back probably 15, 20 years ago. There was another, um, there were bins at, there were bins up there, the smaller drop-off bins as you as you left the hopper and started going down the hill, yeah. around the bend. There were the smaller bins, both for the Salvation Army as yeah. well as for a another firm, something planet. I think it escapes me at the moment. Yeah, I, you're right. Yeah, I think whoever has been there taking up real estate needs to have a contract no matter what. Look good. Uh, that's so, as you say, the, the reason the, those two bins are no longer there is they were not being serviced. And the transfer right. people were tired of calling because and seeing stuff strewn all around, mm. not inside the bin, and and not it was worse than just the bins being filled. Right. They weren't getting picked up, so things got wet. And yeah. uh, eventually, yeah. you know, this goes back years ago, uh, probably at least decades ago or at least a decade ago that those entities were asked to remove their bins and they did and so the only thing we have up there for this type of recycling uh at this time is is the goodwill that that large trailer right i think no matter what at the end of the day whoever's up there needs to have a contract and it doesn't have to be exclusive i think that can be negotiated too i don't think you have to choose between one and another and goodwill could probably put a smaller one if they want to stay there and then somebody can have a choice here you get the town gets 100 bucks if you use this yeah. one or whatever i think that you have to think outside the box but i don't think that somebody should be up there without a contract well, if we were entered into with, I, you know, with um, with Simple or I imagine Bay State as a new entity, because they would be paying us money, there would have to be, you know, things written into, as you say, a contract, which also gives them what what's their out clause, what's our out clause. Uh, certainly, the town attorney would be involved in in drawing up some sort of contract. Um, as far as the exclusivity goes, um, the um, Simple Recycling did did ask for a three year exclusive for the simple reason that they would have to invest in the trailer and they felt that competing with Goodwill or anybody else up there, they would not be able to turn uh, the amount that they needed to do to make this to make this work. Um, mm. And they also they also guaranteed us they would have frequent pickups because. Uh, they have people in Milford all the time and would just swing by at any time. So there was, they, they guaranteed, you know, pick up very quickly, um, you know, because we've heard in the past, um, and I'm not, I don't think I'm speaking out of school here, that, that there were problems with Goodwill picking up many times in the past. Mm -hmm. that, that bin has been closed up, not just during the pandemic, it's been right. closed for other times when it was filled and, you know, they, in order not to leave things strewn around, they just closed it up so, I so think that's, it's, but any I other questions i was just going to say i think it's encouraging that we have these options these right. days uh you know a few months ago we were wondering you know the future of recycling and this yeah. is an, an encouraging day that we're actually discussing and uh and a number of uh opportunities are coming our way and proposals perhaps yeah and it's, it's funny because just as a matter of coincidence i saw in the news this evening that um the cost of hauling uh, municipal garbage trash, uh, not for us. It wasn't wasn't our particular uh, firm on the on the uh, on Channel Eight tonight, but one that handles a lot of a part of Connecticut. That their their, their costs are, are going up, and they're looking to increase the costs. You know those costs, what they call tipping fees, mm -hmm. which you know any, everything that goes into that hopper costs us taxpayers money. And anything we can keep out of that hopper, whether it goes into a textile recycling, the blue bins, um, anywhere else um, that we have recycling set up, uh, the cardboard, 
uh, is all a benefit to all of us. So, Eileen, your hand was up. Yes. So I want to, if everybody agrees, I want to publicize um, on Facebook and the website two things that you mentioned. One, about that August 12th meeting, if anybody wants to attend. And then also what you said about um, sending an email to the Board of Selectmen. So if the committee agrees that we that I can promote those things, do we, do we want to encourage people what to say in their email or do we? Well, I think I think we just lay out the facts and let people make their own decision. Honestly, I mean, you know, I'm I and this committee have been a big advocate for for uh, putting simple recycling out there, but. Um, I think it'd be better if, if we just laid out the facts that there isn't, as you said, there is a meeting, here's what's being proposed, and then let people respond either on Facebook or, or better yet, responding to the selectmen if they feel one way or the other. And then we, we the board of select, will have a, a sense of how those who are interested in recycling textiles and home goods um, feel about this, this issue. Um, I think that's that's important. Uh, I had with me at the Board of Selectmen meeting uh, several free emails uh, that were sent to the Board of Selectmen. I also had the comments that were on Facebook, which were mostly uh, not not 100 percent, but mostly were in favor of, of simple recycling, making this move or uh, make us making the move to simple recycling. Um, you know, I had that, like I say, the, my some of my comments at the Board of Selectmen meeting, I curtailed knowing that there was going to be another day. <laughs> um, became evident once uh, the first selectman uh, told us about Bay State um, textiles and their offer. It seemed evident that we needed, we needed more information to, to make a decision. And, Karen. And is the first selectman or who vets this Bay State um, well, that's what I'm attempting to do by this questionnaire that proposed the proposal um, oh, so, so that would, that would, that would it, ask everybody, this, everyone the same questions. You know, yeah, will you pay us? What will you take? Uh, what kind of contract do you want? Um, you know, there's a number of questions there. I'm just looking quickly at it. You know, what size container would you put? Yeah, would, you, would, would you be willing to put containers elsewhere in town that we would um, be able to um, uh, get? And I also asked for exactly what will you accept, what won't you accept, and and finally give us a list of references. Yeah. As well. Great. Thanks. Yep. Read it. I thought it was good. Yeah, Thank you. Appreciate the board of selectmen taking the time on this to, to yeah. work this out. Yeah. And I agree with what Karen said about possibly having two options because you know first of all the um, goodwill and simple recycling takes slightly different things. This mm -hmm. will give an opportunity for a wider variety of things to get put in a bin. Mm -hmm. And then also for the other reasons of just, you know, people feel allegiance to one or the other, or one makes money and one doesn't, you know. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. We'll see where we go with that. Thanks. And, and, and Eileen, I appreciate your spreading the word on this as well through our social media accounts. Yeah, and I'll see if Terry can uh, also, right. yeah. Carrie, by the way, did publicize our, our shredding day the other day. She's awesome. All right. Um, if, if there's nothing else, anything else on that subject, if not, um, once again, I just keep it on the agenda so we don't forget our, our tour of Oak Ridge recycling, um, will still be put off, uh, for the time being until, uh, we are more comfortable, uh, and they're more comfortable having us, uh, visit their place. Um, <clears throat> our has waste day for October 3rd is still on and it's still a day where they're asking us to be there in person. So for those that have signed up, unless somebody wants to back out or needs to back out, we would expect to have a presence there. Unless of course, um, has waste central says that they don't want us, which they didn't want us in June. So we'll, mm -hmm. we'll keep that as a, uh, uh, an open date for those that um, said they would help October 3rd. October 17th, as I just mentioned, is our proposed um, shredding day and mattress collection and Orange Community Women, uh, once again, clothing drive and goods drive. Um, 
Right now, we're still on on track for that. Hopefully, we will be. Uh, I actually had a call, two calls, but one in particular, very adamant that we should have this shredding day now, not wait. <laughs> um, but um, okay. but yeah. I said we didn't, we didn't have the uh, uh, the volunteers, and we didn't have people that felt comfortable. You know, this was, this was several weeks ago, by the way, probably about three weeks ago. I said. Not only the people that are, are ready to be, you know, that close to other people and et cetera, et cetera. But I said, hang on to your things and October 17th, please come. So mm. that's, um, that's where that's at. Great. Um, any other old business that I may have missed? Yeah. All right. Uh, under new business, the only thing I have to talk about is also, once again, at the transfer station is paint care. Uh, the paint care recycling uh, situation, um, which also have been locked up for, for a long period of time. And um, uh, this was something that I had um, gotten in touch with um, Laura Hannes, who is the paint care New England person. And I think I got to, let's see, I'm looking at an email right now. Um, so I said, um, this goes back just after our last meeting, end of June. I'll paraphrase, I said, can you tell me when paint care will be paint care will be open again for our residents? Um, because it's been locked for several months due to COVID. <laughs> and her response was, um, uh, they never closed. They've been open this whole time. <laughs> Clean harbors, Clean Harbors picks up, and. Um, she says they they need to call Clean Harbors to schedule a pickup. So I went down to the transfer station and let them know that. Um, they had presumed they were closed. Uh, they weren't. So uh, it took about a week and a half or so. They opened up the paint care and found out there was a huge hornet's nest or wasp's nest in there. Mm. So once, once that was eradicated, um, the paint that was there uh, had been stored there has been removed. The paint care trailer is back open and for those that have paint um you can bring that to the transfer station now as well yay that's yay. Open again too so we're, we're getting there <laughs> Once who, who, who opens and closes those things um the transfer station personnel and, and it, it, wow. that was that that um bin was indeed filled okay. um it was filled once again I don't think necessarily beginning of March, but by the end of March. And um, so they closed it up. Uh, and I think with the assumption that like everything else was closed down, that was closed down too, but they really weren't. And uh, fortunately now it's back open. So well, thank good, you. Good, good to go. <laughs> so they've, they've got, they've, they've got them back, back on track. You can uh, tell I've been the boss lady a, a lot lately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So then we are, that's about all I have. Um, is there any new business that I have missed? Anything else or anyone wants to bring up or needs to bring up? Okay. If not, our next meeting will be Wednesday, August 19th, which is a week after that board of selectmen meeting. So um, we'll be we'll full report again uh, on that. So if not, is there a motion from someone? Is there anything else? Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. Motion made by Aline. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Karen. Okay. All in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. 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 The opposed, abstentions, the Orange Recycling Committee is adjourned at 748. Thank you very much, everyone. We'll Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mitch. Bye, everyone. Stay safe.